Hey everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Jurassic World Cinematics. Before we begin today's episode, I would like to ask you to please also take a look at my gaming review YouTube channel called Kanoa Reviews. You can find the link to that channel in the description down below. I do reviews of both old and new games, and you can even request some reviews, including of course, dinosaur games. So please take a look at my channel Kanoa Reviews, and if you like what you see, then please subscribe as it helps me out a lot. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the episode. The variety of the animals that were showcased in the park grew with each month. The recently added woolly rhinos were a welcome addition, and people fantasized about other possible entries that the visitors could enjoy. Maybe a saber tooth or a terror bird. But for now, the managers would return to focus on dinosaurs. The next pen had already been laid out, and it was a smaller one than usual. In the last couple of months, small dinosaurs like the Dryosaurus or the Pachys had been added, but this time, the smaller type would be another carnivore. The Deinonychus would finally get its entry to the park, and this time, they would be adjusted slightly. The entries in the previous zoo and the safari park had a fin on their head, and this version would have that removed. Some were afraid that by doing this, they would look too similar to a raptor, but the scientists assured that the right color patterns would make this distinction for them. In terms of realism, having the Deinonychus and raptors like they are represented ever in Jurassic Park isn't realistic to begin with, starting at the size of the dinosaurs. But the Deinonychus that were sent into the park were beautiful. Their color patterns were indeed the one thing anyone noticed. Though they did seem a bit more playful than the raptors, a bit more juvenile, but in no ways any less deadly. They did not seem as smart as the raptors were though, but still did heavily depend on their social interaction with one another. There was yet again a clear hierarchy, but overall the Deinonychus did not seem as aggressive to each other if this hierarchy was not being upheld to the T. Since there were so many of the dinosaurs in the holding pen, and they were all capable of doing serious damage very quickly, the rangers that headed in were advised to take them down as quickly as possible. Most of the dinos would be a bit startled, but would not feel immediately threatened by the cars. The carnivores all went down before they realized what or who was shooting at them, and they went down without any trouble. They were small enough to transport by car, but for publicity, the helicopters were once again pulled out to show the world the new creatures. Some of the headlines called the Deinonychus the Rainbow Raptors due to their bright colors. There were actually quite a lot of younger guests who preferred the Deinonychus for that specific reason. They were like Skittles, but in dinosaur form. The fact that there were so many dinosaurs in the pen also worked in its favor in terms of popularity. The zone was always bustling with life, and there was always something to see. Since the Deinonychus in the park were smaller than the raptors, they could run around a lot more in their vertical shaped zone. The fact that the large amount of dinosaurs worked into their popularity also was noticed by the scientists, and for the next dinosaur, they wanted to introduce another herd animal. A large area was reserved, and set aligned with all sorts of plants and a drinking spot surrounding a small island. This was one of the largest zones in the park, and it would be the home to a small herd of Triceratops.
the amount would be higher than both the Stegosaurus and Parasaur herd, thereby making it one hell of a sight to behold just by sheer numbers alone. The Triceratops was still one of the most amazing creatures. It was the park's manager's favorite, and this time they tried to replicate the trike to adhere more to its looks like it was portrayed in the first Jurassic Park movie. With so many Triceratops in this herd, they also made sure that there were distinct color patterns to be represented amongst each individual dinosaur. One after the other they emerged from the holding pen, the one even prettier and more colorful than the other. There were so many Triceratops at one point that the holding pen was getting a bit too crowded. And the worst part was that there were still more trikes emerging from the breeding facility. Thus the rangers had to be called in while the Triceratops were still being released. This created a lot of confusion both for the dinosaurs, but also for the rangers. Another small stampede happened, and one of the jeeps got hit by a running triceratops. Luckily, this time it was not Ranger Phil who was involved in the accident. It was his brother, Bill. But in the end, he only needed a few stitches, and as time went on, all of the Triceratops were successfully sedated. Due to the large amount, the process of sedation took longer than normal, but then finally the dinosaurs could be transported to their new home. There were so many dinosaurs that when all available helicopters were flown in, they would still need to make two runs to get all of the dinosaurs from one place to the other. But when the first of the dinosaurs had been placed in the pen, they immediately ran towards the water, like so many dinosaurs did. The interesting thing was that the shape of the drinking spot made it possible to where all the trikes could stand next to each other in a wide circle, giving the visitors sometimes the rare opportunity of showcasing them all standing there. It kind of was reminiscent of watering spots in Africa, where wildebeest would gather to drink. Only here, there would not be a hungry crocodile waiting to strike. Amongst the Triceratops that were molded into being more like the Triceratops from the first movie, there were also still the Triceratops that were represented in the previous zoo and safari park. It was a fascinating bunch of giants, and the pen became the newest, hottest attraction just because so much was happening. Everywhere you looked, there was movement, and the Triceratops were awe-inspiring. There were some who wanted to immediately throw in the spliced Stegoceratops next in line, but the money holders ordered they would have to wait as more creatures had priority that would see the light of day for the first time and were all natural as far as artificially creating dinosaurs go. There was still a lot of choice, both small and large dinosaurs, and both with few and a lot of sharp teeth. <laughs>